welcome back to another week of what's for dinner this week i have three super quick and easy recipes these are perfect for after christmas i'm sure a lot of you have been doing a lot of cooking this past week so these will just be some really simple recipes so you don't have to spend as much time in the kitchen I hope you all had a Merry Christmas or whatever holiday that you celebrate. We had a really good Christmas. We just stayed at home, kept it really simple. My in-laws came over, we had dinner together, and it was just a really nice, relaxing Christmas. So I hope you all had a good day as well. But we're gonna go ahead and get right into these dinner recipes. For this first dinner, I'm making a chicken tater tot casserole. This is one that I've made before and it's definitely really good and super quick and easy to throw together. So I'm starting off with two chicken breasts here that I had cooked up in my Instant Pot. I just seasoned them with a little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I cooked them for about, I think it was about 18 minutes in my Instant Pot. I will link the recipe down below that I always follow whenever I cook chicken in there. But you're basically just gonna want two chicken breasts all cubed cubed up. Now that my chicken is all cut up and ready to go, I'm heading over to my mixing bowl and I'm adding in about a cup and a half of sour cream. Now the recipe actually called for two cups, but I just thought that seemed like a lot. So I only did about a cup and a half. And then you're also going to need one can of cream of chicken, as well as a packet of ranch seasoning mix. And then the recipe did not call for it, but I did decide to add in just a little bit of garlic powder. And then I'm just giving all of this a good mix together. Now for the bacon in this dish, you can definitely cook up your own bacon and crumble it yourself, but I just chose to use one of those little six ounce packets from the store. I added that right into the sauce and then I'm also adding in the chopped up chicken, giving this a good stir together before adding in my cheese and my tater tots. The recipe did say to mix all of the cheese in at this time, but I decided to add a little bit on top. So I only added in probably about two thirds of the shredded cheese, giving that a good mix together before adding in my tater tots. So this is a two pound bag of tater tots, but like the cheese, I decided to reserve a few to go on top because I really wanted the ones on the top to get really nice and crispy. So I added in probably about three quarters of the bag of tater tots, got all of this mixed together, and then I'm gonna throw it into my casserole dish. Of course I'm going to spray my casserole dish with a little bit of cooking spray so nothing sticks and then I'm just going to take that whole casserole mixture and spread it right into the bottom of my casserole dish and get it spread around in an even layer. Now I'm just adding the rest of the shredded cheese to the top of the casserole as well as the tater tots that I had set aside from before. I did really like having the tater tots on top. It definitely made it a little bit crispier and I really liked that. So I think I'll definitely be doing this again the next time I make this dish. But I just baked this at 350 degrees for about like 45 to 50 minutes just until everything is nice and bubbly. The cheese is all melted. This is what it should look like when it comes out of the oven. But this is such a quick and easy dinner to throw together and my kids really really love this one. Now this next dish is a five cheese ziti al forno and this is actually a meatless meal which is really nice to cut down on the cost but I'm just starting off by boiling up one pound of ziti pasta. I did go ahead and salt my water just to give my pasta a little bit more flavor. Now into my other skillet, I'm gonna be making up my sauce for the ziti. So I'm adding in one can of some marinara sauce, as well as one can of some diced tomatoes. And then I'm also adding in one cup of some heavy whipping cream just to make this really nice and creamy. And then to cut some of the acidity, I'm adding in about one teaspoon of some sugar. I'm just gonna stir all of this together and let it come up to a simmer.
Once my pasta had fully cooked, I did go ahead and strain off all of the hot water, and then I'm actually rinsing it with cold water, making sure that everything is nice and cooled off so that none of my noodles will stick together. And then I'm just adding this right back into a pot, and I'm gonna be tossing it with a couple tablespoons of olive oil. This is just gonna prevent any of the noodles from sticking together. Once my sauce had started bubbling, I'm gonna be adding in all of my cheeses. So this is half a cup of Colby and Monterey Jack, half a cup of Parmesan cheese, as well as half a cup of mozzarella cheese. And I'm just gonna stir all of this in there. You just want all of your cheese to melt into the sauce. Now you can serve this pasta up on an individual oven safe plate if you want, but I did not have one of those, so I just decided to throw it into a casserole dish. It would be a little bit easier for my family. And then I'm just taking that sauce mixture and you're just gonna spread it right on top of your pasta. And then I'm just adding on probably about a quarter cup of some Parmesan cheese as well as about a cup of some shredded mozzarella cheese. This is a super cheesy pasta. It's super good, very yummy. The only thing that I would do differently next time is I would add just a little bit of salt into my sauce, maybe about half a teaspoon or so. I definitely think the sauce needed just a tiny bit of salt in there. And then I'm also just taking some Italian breadcrumbs, sprinkling those right on top just to kind of crisp up the top a little bit. It turned out absolutely delicious. And then I just stuck this whole dish under the broiler for just a couple of minutes, probably about five minutes or so, just until all of that cheese started to brown and everything kind of crisped up. If you like the five cheese ZDL Forno from Olive Garden, I definitely think you would really enjoy this dish. Like I said, the only thing that I would do differently next time was I would add just a touch of salt to taste in the sauce before I add it into the pasta. Now for this next dinner, I'm gonna be making some butter garlic shrimp and some roasted broccoli. These turn out so good, super quick and easy to throw together too. So I'm just starting off with a bag of frozen broccoli. You could also use fresh here if you wanted to. And I'm just tossing that with a little bit of olive oil. And then I'm gonna season it up really good with some garlic powder, some paprika, a little bit of sea salt, as well as just some black pepper. Toss all of this together and this seasonings on this are so delicious. Definitely one of my favorite combinations for veggies. After I've added all of my seasonings to taste, of course you can do a little bit more or a little bit less just depending on your family's preferences, but in general this is pretty mild. And then I'm just taking my sheet pan, adding a little drizzle of olive oil, and then I'm just spreading the broccoli all across of that. And then I'm gonna pop this into a 375 degree oven for about half an hour, and then it will crisp up just a tiny bit. I don't like mine super crispy, but this is what it should look like when it comes up out of the oven. Now moving on to the shrimp, I'm just heating up a little drizzle of olive oil in my skillet, and then I'm adding in, I think this was a pound of some shrimp. Mine was the cooked kind. I, that's just what I always use when it comes to shrimp. And then I'm just seasoning that up a little bit with some garlic powder, salt and pepper. I like to keep our shrimp really super and basic. And I'm just cooking this up for probably about five minutes or so. Once my shrimp had heated up, I'm just adding in a little dollop of butter, probably less than a tablespoon. And I just like to let this cook up for a couple of minutes. I don't like to have our butter cook very long, but this just adds a lot of flavor to the shrimp. But I like to keep our shrimp really basic and simple because I always serve it up with some cocktail sauce. This just has a little bit of garlic flavor with the butter in there. So really quick, quick dinner to make.
All right, guys, that is going to wrap up this week of What's for Dinner. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. I would love to have you over on my channel. I share a lot of cooking content, really simple and easy recipes, as well as a little bit of meal prep, grocery hauls, and other food-related content. So if that is something that you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed. But I will catch you all in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, it feels we're mine We played hide and seek for hours Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free Without a care